This set of slides is about selected economic indicators. We are going to do the following. Use a price index to calculate the inflation rate, explain how to calculate the unemployment rate, and explain how to use the Lorentz curve and Gini coefficient to measure distribution of income. This presentation is about using a price index to calculate the inflation rate. First we look at macroeconomic objectives and how to measure if these are achieved. So the five macroeconomic objectives are full employment, price stability, external equilibrium, economic growth and an equitable distribution of income. So policy will be aim to achieve these five objectives. How do we measure whether these objectives have been achieved or improved? To measure employment, we use the unemployment rate. To measure whether price stability has been achieved, we use the inflation rate. To measure whether external equilibrium has been achieved, we use the balance of payments. To measure whether economic growth has been achieved, we use the growth rate in GDP. And to measure the distribution of income in an economy, we use the Lorentz curve and the Gini coefficient. So in this slide, we will explain the use of the unemployment rate and how it is calculated. We will look at the inflation rate and how that is calculated. The balance of payments will be covered in the slides for Learning Unit 10, while the growth rate in the GDP and how we measured that was done in the slides for Learning Unit 6. In this slide, we will also look at the Lorentz curve and the Gini coefficient and how that can be used. So how do we measure inflation? We have various price indexes that we can use, CPI, PPI and the GDP deflator. So the consumer price index or CPI is measured using a basket of consumer goods. The producer price index, PPI, is measured using a basket of producer goods, while the GDP, GDP deflator is measured by comparing GDP at current prices and GDP at fixed prices. So we are going to focus on the CPI, but the same principles apply to the different indexes. So how do we use the CPI to measure inflation? Every five years, Stats A does a survey to see what goods and services an average South African household uses, such as petrol, electricity, clothing, food, and some luxury goods like cell phones and a car. This is called a representative basket of goods and services. The year in which the survey is done is called the base year. And then the next step is to see by how much the total price of the basket changed. And that is one way to measure inflation to see by how much prices have changed. So this table shows imaginary data for the CPI from 2015 to 2019. The base year is 2016 because the CPI for that year is 100. So the base year will always be the year for which the CPI is 100. So how we can interpret it is that during 2016, the cost of the basket of consumer goods was 100 Rand. In 2015, the cost of the basket was lower at 98 Rand. And in 2017, the cost of the basket was higher than in 2016 at 103 Rand. So now we're going to calculate the inflation rate for 2016 using the CPI. So this is the formula to calculate the inflation rate and it's the same way in which we calculate any percentage change in a variable. So it's the change in CPI divided by the CPI before the change times 100 over 1. So the inflation rate for 2016, we will, look, we will compare the CPI for 2016 and 2015. So it's the change in CPI from 2016 to 2015 divided by the CPI in 2015. 
So the CPI for 2016 was 100 and the CPI for 2015 was 98 divided by the CPI for 2015 which was 98 times 100. So 100 minus 98 is 2 divided by 98 times 100 and that gives us 2,04 percent. Let's also calculate the inflation rate for 2017 using the CPI. So we use the same formula to calculate the inflation rate. So now it is the change in the CPI from 2016 to 2017 divided by the CPI for 2016. So the CPI for 2017 is 103, CPI for 2016 is 100 divided by CPI for 2016 which is 100 times 100. So 103 minus 100 is equal to 3 divided by 100 times 100. That gives us 3%. See if you can now calculate the inflation rate for 2018 and 2019. So here we have included the inflation rates that was calculated using the CPI in the table. We cannot calculate this inflation rate for 2015 year as we do not have information on the CPI for 2014. From 2015 to 2016, the price level increased by 2,04%. Thus, the basket of goods was 2,04% more expensive in 2016 than in 2015. From 2016 to 2017, the price level increased by 3%. Thus, the basket of goods was 3% more expensive in 2017 than in 2016. The inflation rate increased. It was higher in 2017 than in 2016. 2017 it was 3%, 2016 it was 2,04%. From 2017 to 2018 the price level increased by 1,94%. Thus, the basket of goods was 1,94% more expensive in 2018 than in 2017. The inflation rate decreased. It was lower in 2018 than in 2017. But note, that does not mean that the prices decrease. The prices increased by 1,94%. What it means is that the prices increased by less in 2018 than it increased from 2016 to 2017. So here we have the table that shows the weight of the different classes of consumer goods in the total CPI. So here you can see that December 2016 is the base month it is the in so the index for December 2016 will be 100. And here you can see the weight. So what this means is that 17,24% of the total basket of consumer goods that used to measure the CPI consisted of food and non-alcoholic beverages. And this index figure provides an indication of the cost of food and non-alcoholic -alco beverages in 2013 compared to what it cost in December 2012, which was the base month. The same amount of food and non-alcoholic -alco -alco beverages that would cost 100 Rand in December 2016 cost 77 Rand 20 cent in 2013. You should now be able to list the macroeconomic policy objectives, explain how we measure if policy objectives have been attained, explain what the CPI is, and explain how the CPI is used to measure inflation. 
You must also make sure that you can explain what the PPI and the GDP deflator is and how the PPI and GDP deflator can be used to measure inflation.